Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and this is question number 10 from the February March 2020 IGCSE Paper 4 Variant 2 from the 0580 syllabus. This is from Cambridge, and this question here is all about functions. Okay, and you have these three functions defined as f of x is 4x minus 1, g of x is x squared, and h of x is 3 to the power of negative x. And we've got to find in its simplest form first f x minus 3. Now a lot of students get confused when they see something like this. Whereas if they were told to find, for example, f2, they would have absolutely no problem. So, oh, we have to replace the x with 2 in the function f. So you would say f2 equals 4 times 2 minus 1, which is going to give you 7. If that was a question, there'd be absolutely no problem. Now, the same procedure that we used when we found f2 is the same procedure, same sorry, procedure that we're going to use when we find fx minus 3. Basically, what we do is we replace the x in the function. This is 4x minus 1. Replace the x with whatever's inside the bracket. Okay, so the the 2 goes in place of the x. So in this case. Instead of saying 4x, we have to replace the x here with whatever's inside the bracket. So inside um, the bracket is x minus 3. So the re x is removed and the x minus 3 takes its place. So it's 4 times x minus 3 and then minus 1. Which gives you 4x minus 12 and then you've got the minus 1. The 4 only multiplies the negative 3 and the x, not the minus 1. So brackets close there. So that simplifies to 4x minus 13. And there's the answer. Okay, pretty simple. And similarly with g of 5x, the same kind of thing. If, it, if the question said find g of 2, you know that you're going to put 2 here. Instead of the x, it will be 2 and then squared, which gives you 4. But the question says find g of 5x. So instead of the x, you write 5x. So this g of 5x becomes, instead of x squared, becomes 5x all squared. Okay, the x is replaced with 5x. Now, don't forget to square everything inside here. So, it's 5 squared, which is 25, and x squared, which is x squared. So, your answer is 25x squared. So, there's your answer, 25x squared. All right, so these were just put there to make you understand the concept. And these are the answers for part 1 and 2. Now, for 10 part B, it says find the inverse of fx. Okay, now for part B, it says find f minus 1x. This means the inverse of the function fx. Okay, we have to find the inverse of this function f of x. Now, the inverse of a function basically does the opposite or undoes the function, you could say. All right, and the way to find the inverse is an algebraic method, which I'm going to show you first, which is mostly what, you know, which normally is the easier way of dealing with it. And um, basically what you do is you take the function f of x equals 4x minus 1, and you call f of x y. So you have y equals 4x minus 1. And then what you do is you replace the y with x and replace the x with y. Not rearranging at the moment, just wherever you see y, you call it x. Wherever you see x, you call it y. And then you make y the subject of this formula. So to make y the subject of this formula, I've got to get rid of this negative 1. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And then I've got to get rid of this 4, which is multiplying. So I divide both sides by 4. So I end up with x plus 1 divided by 4 equals y. This is the inverse function. Okay, what you get at the end when you made that y the subject is the inverse function after you have swapped the places of x and y. That's one way of dealing with it. Another way of dealing with it is by using what's called a flow chart. So first of all, you think about what this function and how this function is formed. Like here, you would start off with x. And how would you end up with 4x minus 1? Well, first you'd have to multiply the x by 4. That would give you 4x. And then how would you get 4x minus 1? Well, of course, you just subtract 1 from that, and you end up with what we have, 4x minus 1. This is the function. This is the function f of x. This is f of x. To get the inverse function, you start at the end with x. And you work backwards. You go this way. And you do the inverse operations, the opposite operation. So the opposite of 
subtracting one is adding one. So your first thing we do is you would add one to x. And the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So then you would divide by 4 instead of multiplying by 4. And when you end at this side, that will be the inverse function. So this is your inverse function. Okay, as we can see, x plus 1 over 4. So, you know, both ways are perfectly fine. This is what you normally would use, I guess, in, in the exam. But, you know, this is a nice way of understanding inverse functions. So that's part B done. Now for part C. It says, find the value of h, h1 correct to four significant figures. So what does this mean? This is a composite function. What it means is you've got to first find what h1 is. And when you found what h1 is, you replace, uh, you then find h of h1, basically. So h1 means you take the function h over x and you replace the x with 1. So h1 would be basically 3 to the power of, okay, minus 1. You replace the x with negative 1, which gives you, this is going to be 1 over 3. From the law of indices, a to the power of minus n is 1 over a to the power of n. It's like the reciprocal. So 3 to the power of minus 1 is 1 third. So that's h1. So what we have to do is we've got to find h of h1. Okay, which is going to be h of 1 third, because h1 is 1 third. So now what we've got to do is replace the x in here with 1 third. So this is 3 to the power of negative 1 third. Now if you want to put this in your calculator straight away, you could do so. You could just put 3 to the power of negative 1 over 3, and that would give you your answer. Okay, and that's perfectly fine. That's 0 0.69336. 0 0.69336 continues on for a little bit. Uh, 1, 2, and so on. Okay, and we want four significant figures. So this is the first significant figure. It's the first non-zero number. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. So you end up with 0 0.6934. That's fine. Also, if you want to, you could say, okay, this is the same as saying 1 over 3 to the power of a third which is the same as 1 over the cube root of 3. Just for your further information in case you have to deal with this. The power of 1, negative power means reciprocal. So you put the same thing, but with a positive power in the denominator. And when you have a fractional root, okay, a fractional power, sorry, then the denominator is the root and the numerator is the power. So it means 1 over the cube root of 3. And you can see that that was our answer when we wrote this in the calculator. And if I put 1 over the cube root of cube root of 3 will get exactly the same answer 0 0.6934 when you round it to four significant figures as we're asked to do so so there's the answer to part c of this question number 10 now going on to part d it says show that g of 3x minus 2 minus h of negative 3 can be written as 9x squared minus 12x minus 23. Now it's very important when you have a question like this that you um, show your steps carefully because they've shown you what it's going to be equal to. Right? So you can't just write any old nonsense and then write this as your answer. Right? You have to make sure you show your steps very carefully. Now as we mentioned, um, what we do in g of 3 of x minus 2 is we replace the x with whatever's inside this bracket. So g of whatever it is, is g in the function g, wherever x is, you replace it with what's inside this bracket. So instead of x squared, this is going to be 3 minus, 3x three minus 2 squared. So you have 3x minus 2 squared. That's that part. Minus and h of minus 3. So you could replace the x with negative 3 in this function. That's going to be 3 to the power of negative and then negative 3. Be very careful about that. h of negative 3, you replace the x with negative 3. So you have minus and then minus 3. Okay, of course, we'll give you plus 3. Now, when you square this bracket, don't make the common mistake of just writing 9x squared minus 4 or 9x squared plus 4. No, you, this is basically 3x minus 2 multiplied by itself. So you're going to get 9x squared minus 6x minus another 6x and plus 4. The quick way of squaring a bracket um, using a pattern is to square the first term. That's 9x squared. If there's a minus, you write a minus. Then you multiply these two terms together and double that. As you can see, that's like minus 6x and minus another 6x. That's going to give you 6, 6x doubled. It'll give you 12x or minus 12x. And then you square the last term. When you square minus, uh, when you square minus 2, you get plus 4. 
that's that part of it. So that's 9x squared minus 6x minus another 6x, which is minus 12x. And then minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4. And this is minus 3 to the power of 3, because it's minus and minus gives you a plus. And 3 to the power of 3 is 27. So this is going to give you 9x squared minus 12x plus 4 minus 27. And 4 minus 27 is negative 23. So we can see that that gives us 9x squared minus 12x minus 23 as required in the answer. So your steps should be shown very clearly for such a question. Now for um, part 2 of question 10d. It says use the quadratic formula to solve this equation 9x squared minus 12x minus 23 equals 0 giving your answers to two decimal places. So here they've specifically asked us to use the quadratic formula. So that means we don't use completing the square. Um, we don't try to factorize. We use the quadratic formula. Okay. So to use the quadratic formula, we know that if you have an equ a quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, then to find x using the formula, it's minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a okay now what's not important what's important is for you to show that you know how to apply this formula not that you just memorize it. if you write this down and you put everything in the wrong place you won't get any marks for that right so you have to show that you know how to use the formula even if you don't write the formula down in this form so we know a here is the coefficient of x squared which is 9 b here is the coefficient of x which be careful it's negative 12 right it's not just 12 it's a negative 12 and c again is negative 23 so now if we use this formula we're going to have minus b so it's minus minus 12 so i can write this like this if i write 12 that's fine because minus and minus becomes plus plus or minus the square root of b squared now that's minus 12 all squared which is the same as 12 squared because the minus has to be squared as well minus 4 times a which is 9 times c which is negative 23 and all of that is going to be over 2 times a which is 2 times 9 that's writing this gives you the method marks okay if the next step now i just stick this in my calculator it's absolutely fine i can just take this and write all of this in my calculator and write down um, the answers well I'll, I'll write down the answer in a particular form first so I can do this I know this is going to become plus 12 if you want to you can write it as it is um, 12 plus you can't put plus or minus but you just put the plus first and then the square root of and again it's going to be minus 12 squared which is the same as 12 squared but just I'll write it be careful if you're going to write the minus sign it has to be inside the bracket if you don't put it inside the bracket that will be a problem Okay, you can't just put minus 12 squared like this. If you put minus 12 squared this like this, it's going to give you minus 144. You have to put um, the minus inside the bracket as well. Then it gives you plus 144, which it should be. So minus 12 squared minus 4 times 9 times negative 23. 23. All over 2 times a. So 2 times 9. Okay, so that will give us our answer. I'm going to write it in this form first. This is 2 plus 3 root 3 over 3. Okay, that's one of the answers. Or the other answer is going to be if I go back and I change this to a minus sign here. I change this to a minus sign here. That's going to give me 2 minus. 2 minus 3 root 3 over 3. So my answers are going to be this answer here which i'm going to write as a decimal so it's minus minus 1.06538 so i'll write it over here negative 1.06538 continues on and this answer is going to be um i'll just change this to a plus again just and that gives you um 2.39871 2.39871 continues on now they want us to write them to two decimal places so this is going to be two point that's going to be four zero and that's going to be negative 1.07 okay so those are the two answers there rounded to three uh, to, to two decimal places two decimal places okay so 2.398 becomes 2.40 because that becomes a zero and we have to write a zero here um, because 
that is in the second decimal place. If you don't, you definitely will lose a mark for that because they specifically said two decimal places in the question. And this is minus 0, 1.07. That becomes a 7 because there's a 5 after it. So there we have the answer to part 2 of part D of question number 10. Now for part E. It says find x when f61 equals h of x. So first of all, f61. What's f61? Well, it's when you replace the x with 61 here. So it's 4 times 61 minus 1. So that's going to be 244 minus 1, which is 243. Okay, just to make sure. 4 times 61 minus 1, 243. Okay, and we have to make that equal to h of x. h of x is 3 to the power of minus x. So we have to solve the equation. 3 to the power of minus x is equal to 243. Now, when you have this type of equation in IGCSE, then for sure we can express these two numbers with the same base. For sure. There's no doubt about it. Okay, when you have an equation which is an exponential equation in IGCSE, you will definitely be able to express them with the same base, and that's what the examiners expect you to do. Using logarithms and these other techniques from AS, I mean, it would be acceptable, but you have to learn a whole new topic, which is not even in the IGCSE syllabus. So there's no need for us to really do that. It's much simpler to just think um, about making the bases the same. And for sure, you'll be able to express them as the same base. So for sure, because this is 3 to the power of something, this will also be 3 to the power of something. I know for sure that 243 is 3 to the power of something. So all you have to do is just a bit of trial and error. So for, I know that 3 squared is 9, 3 cubed is 27, 3 to the power of 4 is 81. So let's try the next power up, 3 to the power of 5. 3 to the power of 5 is 243. So when I know that this is 243 is 3 to the power of 5. So I can write these now with the same base. 3 to the power of minus x is equal to 3 to the power of 5. Once the bases are the same, that means the powers must be equal. 3 to the power of something is equal to 3 to the power of something. That means minus x must be the same as 5, which therefore means x is negative 5 if you solve that. Okay, so x is negative 5. Okay, so that's how we can solve that. And we can, um, you know, show that that's true. So when x is negative 5, you have 3 to the power of negative negative 5, which is 3 to the power of 5, which is 243. So you can show that it's correct by just putting it back into the equation. So there we have the answer to part E. And that concludes this question, which is question number 10, all about um, you know functions and also a bit about you know some equations. We had some quadratic uh, formula. We also had exponential equations all mixed up in this topic which normally does happen with this topic um, other questions that you might want to um, see from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here if you click on that link other questions from the topic of functions from IGCSE can be found in the playlist over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link here thank you for watching and see you soon